So I was very pleased and also very relieved that ecosystem-based adaptation and nature-based solutions really were hot topics at the Adaptation Futures Conference in Cape Town a couple of weeks ago. There's a real sense of a growing consensus in the adaptation community that nature, that working with, enhancing and restoring nature, can not only help us deal with the drivers of climate change, but also can deal with many of the major risks and hazards associated and linked to climate change, with many more um, projects emerging across the globe um, and funding being directed towards them. However, in many of the sessions, you know, three major issues, major challenges um, kept coming up. Um, and I want to talk about each of those in turn. First of all, there was a sense that um, the adaptation community perhaps isn't engagingly sufficient, engaging sufficiently well with ecosystem scientists to take into account the impacts of climate change on, the, on nature itself. I mean, nature is being severely impacted by warming, by flooding, by increasingly variable conditions in the environment. And we really need to work with and enhance nature so that it, it can adapt to climate change and thereby deliver a suite of adaptation benefits. Many um, engineers that I spoke to at the conference were talking about nature-based solutions, which was a wonderful thing and a, and a, and a great change, but um, many do not in, always appreciate the difference between a monoculture and a diverse ecosystem. Diverse ecosystems are very resilient much more resilient to the effects of climate change and also to the effects of invasive species and pathogens and so forth. So if we want to implement nature-based solutions, the emphasis really needs to be on enhancing biodiversity and connectivity and not simply planting trees and so forth. The other major issue that kept coming up was the proliferation of terms around nature-based solutions. Um, in many sessions we heard about ecosystem-based adaptation, ecosystem-based mitigation, eco-DRR, green infrastructure and so on. And many people, both from the policy world and from practitioners, were asking, you know, what do all these terms mean? Are they the same? Are they equivalent? And does it matter? And I think it's really important for the research community to simplify the lexicon, to um, agree on um, a set of terms and to maintain, thereby maintain the credibility of all those who are advocating nature's role in helping us adapt to the effects of climate change. So there's some work to be done there to avoid confusion. The third um, major issue or major challenge is, is building a bridge between the blossoming um, body of work on um, nature-based interventions and nature-based solutions and the policy and practitioner communities. You know, every year, hundreds if not thousands of relevant work studies are published, but these aren't being consolidated and translated sufficiently well for the benefit of those de designing policies and, and those trying to implement policies. So IIED, together with Oxford University, at the Adaptation Futures Conference, we launched a new policy platform called the Nature-Based Solutions Policy Platform, in which we showcase the role of nature in the climate pledges of all the signatories of the Paris Agreement. And then in tandem, we link these policies with the underlying science. So uh, partly through a systematic review in which we're bringing together these many, many studies and making them more accessible and understandable to those revising the climate pledges associated with the Paris Agreement. And the idea there is to support the global stock take and to raise ambition for nature in these climate pledges as they get revised over the coming years. Another major source of inspiration at Adaptation Futures was the feeling that despite chaos in government, action at the local level for adaptation is increasing and growing in strength. And it seems oftentimes that where we lack climate leadership from above or where the, um, the political landscape above is increasingly unstable, so the strength um, and resilience of adaptation on the ground grows. But what seemed to be true is that what's really needed to sustain adaptation action for the long term is engagement at the local level. So we need to engage with local communities, local businesses and local governments to ensure that adaptation action delivers the most benefits for the most people over the long term.